Today we're going to talk about how to inspect your lanyard. When inspecting your lanyard, you'll want to not only look at the lanyard, but feel it too. So you'll want to inspect it with your bare hands. There are two basic types of shock absorbing lanyards. Those with a shock pack, like this one here, and those without. If your lanyard has a shock pack, make sure that the stitching on both ends isn't missing or torn. On this view pack lanyard, you can look through the sides or open up the label cover and look under the labels to see the webbing through the view pack window. Check to see if the webbing inside is torn or misshapen. Lanyards without a shock pack are commonly referred to as internal lanyards because the shock pack is built internally. So what you end up with is bunched up webbing. For the internal lanyard, the fall indicator warning label is here in the folds of the webbing. You have to manually pull the folds of the webbing apart. If you can read any of the words in that label, it means that it could have been in a fall and you must remove the lanyard from service. For either type of lanyard, check your labels. If they are missing or you cannot read your labels, you have to remove from service. On web lanyards, you'll look for holes, tears, abrasions, discoloration, or fraying of the webbing. Make sure to look at both sides and pull on the webbing to visually confirm that there are no holes or tears. If there are, you must remove from service. If there are abrasions, discoloration, or fraying that affects more than 10% of the webbing, remove from service as well. Next, bend the webbing to make an inverted U so you can get a better view of the surface and see if there are any shiny spots or broken fibers throughout. Rub your hands across it to see if you can feel any hard spots which could be evidence of heat stress. Look at the stitching and make sure there is no loose stitching. Also, make sure that it has a wear pad. The wear pad's there. If not, you must remove from service. If you have a rope lanyard, grasp the rope with both bare hands, rotate the lanyard, and inspect the strands from end to end. Remember to check the inner strands to check for damage, deterioration, or chemical attack. What you're looking for is fiber cuts or nicks, broken, fuzzy or worn fibers, overall deteriorations, UV damage, or chemical attack. Also, modifications, like if someone tied knots into the rope or is written all over it. If there's any of this, you'll need to take that out of service. Damage and deterioration may not be evident simply by looking at the rope. Manually touching the rope is equally important. Look for signs of heat damage, such as burnt, charred, or brittle fibers, or hard shiny spots. Synthetic fiber ropes will show a reduction in strength when used at elevated temperatures. For exposure to excess temperatures specific to the rope fiber, refer to the manufacturer's specifications and instructions. Rope diameter. Just like in webbing, weakened areas from extreme loads, such as being exposed to a fall, will appear as noticeable changes in original diameters. As you run your hand down the rope, the diameter should be uniform throughout. If there is a variation of more than 5%, you must remove from service. Next, look at the rope and make sure you cannot hockle it. That is unraveling of the lanyard due to constant turning in the same direction. The rope will become loose and that needs to be removed from service. Check your thimbles. The termination point, if it's loose, damaged, or simply not present, then you should remove from service. Make sure the splices are secured properly so they will not unravel. Make sure the tape and shrink wrap is not torn. Now for all lanyards, let's look at the mechanisms, which could be either a double locking snap hook, rebar hook, or carabiner. First, you want to make sure there is no cracks or bends in the metal. Check for discoloration, which could mean that it has been exposed to chemicals. If you find cracks, bends, or discoloration, you cannot use this lanyard. Now, open up the snapper rebar hook and let it go. It must close freely by itself. Do this a few times to make sure it doesn't get caught. Also, make sure that it closes properly. Make sure the nose piece is flat against the tongue. If it's not, it could twist and open up while you're working and you don't want that. Remove it from service. Turn the hook to the side and inspect the rivets. Press your thumb against the back side of the rivet to make sure it is in there securely. For the double locking snap hook, make sure the lock is functioning properly. Does it keep the hook closed? Does it unlock smoothly and spring back into locking position on its own? For a carabiner, open the carabiner up. Turn, twist, pull it open, and let it close by itself. If it closes okay, then you know you're all right. Again, do that a couple times to make sure it works properly. Now that your lanyard is passed inspection, remember to inspect the rest of your personal fall arrest equipment just as carefully. If you've got any questions or need additional information, please give us a call or visit falltech.com.